Partogram case series. This is the second video in our series on the partogram. So here we're putting our knowledge into practice. So make sure you've watched the video on the basics of the partogram first. So we've got Mrs. Alice Smith here, who has presented to Central Delivery Suite at 9 a.m. This is her third pregnancy after having had two normal vaginal deliveries. Her husband brought her to labor ward after her waters broke at 8 o'clock this morning, which we've listed down here as SROM, spontaneous rupture of membranes. Okay, so this is pretty much the basic story will be given by the patient. What next? So of course we need to gather some more information. In most healthcare services around the world, obstetric patients will carry a record of their pregnancy with them. In Malta, this is called the blue card. So we definitely want to have a look at this to understand the history of this pregnancy and her previous pregnancies, her past medical history, etc. Then move on to asking her a few questions. In general labor ward, it's always important to remember to ask questions based on the following. Pain, bleeding, amniotic fluid, and fetal movements. So first of all, pain. Does she have any contractions? How intense are the contractions? Has she taken any pain relief? Is she coping with the pain? Mrs. Smith told us that she has one to two contractions every 10 minutes and she has had no pain relief so far. Bleeding. Has she seen any bleeding or pinkish discharge? She told us she has seen some pinkish discharge on her pad. This is a sign of the show of labor, the mucus plug, which is released before labor. Amniotic fluid. She told us that her water is ruptured. So what did she notice? How much fluid and what was the color? She saw a large gush of clear fluid, completely soaking her underwear and trousers. And lastly, is she feeling the baby moving? She was happy with the fetal movements. Next, we want to examine her. An abdominal examination to assess the position of the baby, particularly the presentation and the engagement of the, of the head. Next, a vaginal examination to perform a Bishop score and we also need to perform a CTG. So in Mrs. Smith's case, the fetal head was two-fifths palpable abdominally. On VE, the cervix was two centimeters dilated, one centimeter long, soft, central, with a station of zero minus two. And the CTG was reassuring, marking two contractions in 10 minutes. Now, at this point, we will not start our partogram, as she has not entered the active phase of labor yet. Instead, we make a plan to reassess her in four hours. So, four hours have passed, and we assess her once again. So this time, the fetal head is three-fifths palpable abdominally, the cervix is 5 cm dilated, 0.5 cm long, soft central, with a station of 0 minus 2. The CTG is reassuring, with 4 contractions in 10 minutes. So now, Mrs. Smith has entered into the active phase of the first stage of labor, and we can start our partogram. So let's fill it up together. So starting off with her personal details. So we've got Alice Smith, Gravida 3, Para 2, ID number 1234, date and time of admission, let's say 3rd March 2025 at 9am, and ruptured membranes, we said was an hour before she arrived, so at 8am. So we're starting off by marking the fetal heart rate, which is the baseline heart rate from the CTG. So in this case, a baseline of 140 beats per minute. Then we take note of the amniotic fluid, so in this case it's clear, so we're putting the letter C. And so far we've had no molding. Next, with a cross, we're going to mark down cervical dilatation at 5 cm. And the scent of the fetal head with a circle, which we said is 3 fifths palpable. Then, down below, we can write down the corresponding times. Once that's done, we can draw up our alert and action lines. So the alert line starts off always from 4 cm and makes its way up covering 1 cm per hour until we reach 10 cm dilatation. The action line follows the same gradient of the alert line, but with a 4 hour delay. And these will help us to make sure Mrs. Smith is on the right track. Next, we're going to draw up the contractions. So we said we have 3 contractions in 10 minutes, lasting 30 seconds. So we're using the boxes with diagonal lines. 
Mrs. Smith has not been given any oxytocin, so we have a dash here. She has not been given any drugs or IV fluids. We can note down here her parameters with pulse, blood pressure, temperature, and a measure of a urine dipstick and urine volume. Great, so now that that's done, what's next? So the plan now would be to review her again in four hours. In the meantime, we are still taking note of some parameters on the partogram, as we can see over here. So we've got the fetal heart rate checked every hour, unless otherwise indicated by the CTG parameters. The contractions are also monitored every hour, as well as the maternal vital signs. So here we can see the partogram being filled in slowly, slowly. Now, it's 5 p.m. and the four hours have passed, and Mrs. Smith is due another assessment. So this time, the fetal head is not palpable abdominally. The cervix is fully dilated, with a station of 0 plus 1, and the CTG is still reassuring. So now we can plot the cervical dilatation and fetal descent. So as you can see here, we have not skipped neither the alert nor the action line. So we can wait for Mrs. Smith to get the urge to push, and then proceed with the second stage of labor, that is pushing. And in this case, pushing started shortly after the examination, and she had the vagina delivery of her baby boy at 17.35. So this was one example of labor using the partogram. Stay tuned for my next video with another case to add to our partogram case series. Like and subscribe.